Channel 4, WTAE-TV in Pittsburgh. This is Action News. Good evening. Quick work by city paramedics tonight saved the life of a worker on 2nd Avenue. Don? Paul, an unidentified construction worker was seriously injured tonight when he fell from a parkway ramp near the Armstrong Tunnels. Police say the man stepped through a weakened floor beam and fell about two stories to the railroad tracks below. The man was taken to Mercy Hospital where right now he's undergoing treatment. The accident happened right after 8 o'clock tonight. Pittsburgh police have arrested one suspect tonight in connection with a fire last Monday night at the Mifflin Elementary School in Lincoln Place. And more arrests are expected soon. Adam Lynch has more in this live report. Adam? Thank you, Don. You're right. It was quick work by police that resulted in getting four suspects right away, or at least uh, in fairly quick order after that fire last night. One of those is in custody at the present time. His name is Robert Martin. He's 18 years old from Lincoln Place. And police, right at the very moment that I'm talking to you, are arriving at the public safety building up over my right shoulder there, bringing in the other three suspects. And they'll all either be charged with burglary and arson or one or the other. It was quick work, and it was a uh, good job by detectives. I asked Steve Terzek of the burglary department how he was able to get the suspects this quickly. If we would have Detective Parsons and Ballabeck assigned to my squad here, spent the last two days going out and uh, hitting and beating the bricks and talking to everybody they could, and we kept coming back to a certain few names. Two of the boys, uh, Martin and uh, a fellow by the name of Passmore, will be charged with the arson and the burglary-related offenses. The other two remaining men will be just charged with burglary, theft, and receiving stolen property. Why the difference? Uh, two of them left the school, and then the last two decided to stay back, set the fire to uh, hopefully to uh, eliminate any fingerprints or evidence connected in with the crime. The other three suspects uh, that Terzik uh, gave me the names on are Dean Passmore, 20, also of Lincoln Place, an 18-year-old Dan Salay, S-A-L-A-J, but pronounced Salay, also of Lincoln Place, and a 19-year-old Richard Jordan, they're not entirely sure of his address. Uh, the police have been arriving here just as I've been on the air, bringing some of the other suspects in. Assumedly, they will have all four of them in there tonight. And we have been told also that the people out in that area have been somewhat intimidated by young men in that area and that uh, it was difficult to get these names, but police were finally able to do so. Police and people out there in that area are asking for a little more protection. That's it from downtown. I'm Adam Lynch. Now back to the studio and to you, Don. All right, thanks, Adam. Tonight in Washington, the National Association of Letter Carriers honored two of their own from Western Pennsylvania. Bob Mandera was cited for his fundraising efforts for the Diabetes Association, and Gregory Peckich for trying to save the life of a CMU professor after his car crashed into the Monongahela River in January of 1984. David Toma's widow praised the Ben Avon mailman. She sent this mailgram, and I'll just read it to you briefly. It says, to us, you shall always be the symbol of heroism with much gratitude, the family of David Tuma. Gregory Peckich suffered hypothermia in his rescue attempt, but his benefits did not cover his medical costs. Instead, the employees of Branch 84 of the Postal Service all pitched in to cover those costs. Two Navy flyers had a close call near Dallas, Texas today. An engine failed on their F-4 Phantom jet during a routine training exercise. The crew could not eject from the craft, but were able to put the plane down in a wooded area about 20 miles from the city. Both men suffered only minor injuries. A Mount Pleasant man is being held on a $100,000 bond tonight in connection with the shooting death of his brother. 18-year-old Barry Lakin was shot once in the head yesterday in his brother's apartment. The brother, 20-year-old James Shanahan, was arrested a short time later. Shanahan was home on leave. He is stationed at Hunter Army Airfield in Savannah, Georgia. The search continues tonight for a suspect wanted for the rape of a 7-year-old girl in East Liberty back on April 21st. Community leaders have joined police in their efforts to find this man, described as a light-skinned black male about 6 feet tall with curly hair. Copies of this sketch are being posted throughout the East Liberty area where the rape took place. Gary Dotson walked out of an Illinois state prison today for his second taste of freedom after his mother and an attorney posted $10,000 cash bond. Dotson was granted bond yesterday by an Illinois appeals court while he appeals his 1979 rape conviction. He'd been freed for one week last month but ordered back to prison when a judge in Cook County rejected the recantation testimony of Kathleen Webb. 
Besides asking the appeals court to overturn the conviction, Dotson also petitioned Governor James Thompson for clemency. A New York socialite accused of running a high-priced prostitution ring raised several thousand dollars last night to defray her legal fees by staging a defense fund ball at a posh New York disco, Sydney Biddle Barrows. Clad in strapless gown and elbow-length gloves, personally greeted guests and friends at the, the Limelight Disco. Some 300 people, many in black tie, paid $40 each to bail out the lady dubbed the Mayflower Madam because her ancestors supposedly came over on the Mayflower. When Action News comes back tonight, we'll take a look at President Reagan's first day in West Germany, where he'll take part in the economic summit. But he'll also visit a cemetery in Bitburg where SS troops are buried, and that has angered Jewish people around the world. Stay with us. Don't miss the 12-hour sale at Kaufman's. Spectacular savings throughout the store. Thursday, 12 hours only. Don't be late. Yelling for the home team and calling for another cold iron. Here's to tradition and to the deep down satisfying taste of Iron City beer. Well, you can't pump an iron in Cincinnati, Camel City Park, or Wrigley or Shea. You can't pump an iron too far away from Pittsburgh, PA. Pump an iron. Here's to tradition. Pump an iron. And deep down satisfying taste. Pump an iron. To the one that's brewed right here. Pump an iron. My Iron City beer. Well, you can't pump an iron. Good morning. Can I interest you in an ordinary gasoline? I'll stick with Mobile Super Unleaded. You need something to slow this thing down. I'll stick with Mobile Super Unleaded. I just saw the gas. The octane is so high. Thank you. This thing runs so good, I'm getting angry. I'm getting out! I'm getting car sick. America, you don't know it yet, but you're going to Europe this summer on Pan Am. You're going because Pan Am has the price busters. Money saving fast to 23 European cities. It may be London. Or Paris. Or Rome. But with airfare so low and the dollar so strong, you're going. America, I guess we're going. President Reagan arrived in West Germany today for the annual Seven Nation Economic Summit meeting. Mr. Reagan is expected to ask for more open trade between us and our allies and press our American allies overseas to defend the already strong dollar. The Reagans left the airport for a 14th century castle the German government uses to house state visitors. Ironically, the castle is owned by a baron who happens to be a godson of Adolf Hitler. Baron says his father was a Nazi who uh, turned against Hitler and was placed under house arrest. Well, the West German capital in Bonn is under very tight security tonight for that summit, and apparently for good reason. West German police today disarmed a bomb timed to explode at an aerospace industry office in Bonn just 10 minutes after the president arrived at the airport today. Police described the bomb as a 13-pound explosive charge packed with a fire, in a fire extinguisher. It was spotted just in time by a private citizen. Another source of concern is the president's planned visit to the Bitburg Military Cemetery, where Nazi SS troops are buried. The president plans to lay a wreath at the cemetery this Sunday, stirring a storm of protest from American veterans as well as the Jewish community. Tonight, Deborah Fox talked with two survivors of the Holocaust and found the president's planned visit to Bitburg has reopened old wars. They had no crime. The only crime is that they had a different religion than the Nazis had. And those Nazis is going to honor. Dora Eiler spent four years in a Nazi concentration camp. Her mother and father, her brothers and sisters, and all of her aunts and uncles were murdered at the hands of the Nazis. She is hurt and surprised that the president plans to honor the men that killed her family and millions of other Europeans. Those Nazis have, those murders have killed 20 million people, more than 20 million people. How can he put a read on it? I think it's absurd. It's terrible. This is playing with people's, with people's feelings, hurt, pain that people will never forget. 
Sarah Isaac survived Bergen-Belsen. Her parents and seven brothers and sisters did not. The very thought of Reagan visiting the Bitburg Cemetery brings back horrible memories. This haunts me very bad now. Every night I'm dreaming on it. And I take even tranquilizers uh, every day because my heart is pumping so fast that makes me cry. The survivors would like to send a message to the president telling him what they went through was not Hollywood, it was real. I'm always scared they have a, a saying, history has a tendency of repeating. It scares me to death that a thing like this could happen. Deborah Fox, Channel 4 Action News. Millions of workers in the Soviet Union and throughout Eastern Europe began a three-day holiday today. It's the annual May Day celebration. The occasion was marked by a huge parade in Red Square in Moscow. More than four million people gathered to see Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and a massive display of Russian military equipment. In Poland, May Day was celebrated with bloody street battles. Police fought supporters of the outlawed Solidarity Trade Union. Solidarity demanded the release of political prisoners and pay hikes to cover government-imposed increases in food prices. The 3,000 protesters threw rocks at police, who in turn attacked the demonstrators with clubs. Several people on both sides were hurt, and scores of demonstrators were arrested. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. If you stay where you are now, you'll probably be reminded of where you were 25 years ago. We'll bring back some fond memories for you next on Action News. All out is the only way you go. And it earns you the rewards of success. Naturally, that includes the car you drive. Distinctive, elegant. Seville goes all out to achieve your high goals for luxury travel. Drive the 1985 Seville, the car for those who, like you, choose to go first class all the way. 8.8% financing now through May 31st on Seville. You run this whole department. With the help of a few other people. He was class president. He always thought big. Yeah. <laughs> a personal computer. Uh, actually, it's more than that, Dad. It's a tower. Tower? An NCR tower. It's faster and more powerful than a personal computer. And all my people can hook up to it. Smart. <laughs> like his father. And uh, like his mother. The NCR tower, when you need more than a personal computer. When we needed a new washer and dryer, <laughs> we needed them fast. That's how we discovered a new store. Well, not a new, new store. Montgomery Ward. We expected to see appliances, but not an entire appliance center or brand names. We compared over 30 different models without ever leaving the store. Now that's what I call an appliance center. You're all set. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's great. <laughs> in Ohio, but I'm a beachcomber in New York. I'm a New York. I'm a tugboat skipper in Nova Scotia, but I'm a wine sipper in New York. I love New York. New York is a summer wonderland. Call now for your free vacation guide and discover a whole new you. I'm a star on Broadway, but in New York, I'm just part of the scenery. I Things aren't going too well for the Pirates uh, lately, but go back 25 years. Uh, they took over first place in early July of 60. And oh, no, a lot earlier than that. But for good. Yeah, for good. For in good. July. Things were much better then. Yes, they were. We have to talk about tonight first. All right. And the Pirates would have been better off if it had uh, rained a little harder and a little longer. Just can't seem to get a winning streak going. San Diego got them tonight. After only one win, they lose to the Padres 6-4. to four. San Diego third inning with one out. Gary Templeton, a fly ball that, I don't know, think maybe it should have been caught. George Hendrick started back and then didn't exactly kill himself to get back up. Bumbry later drove Templeton home, Templeton home to make it one nothing. Two men on in the Padres fourth. Two nothing uh, San Diego. This is Tim Flannery. He is the nephew of one of the players we'll be featuring in our series. Uh, Hal Smith who used to catch for the Pirates in 1960. He doubles to make it four nothing. Flannery's out at third though. And a nice relay throw. Pirates lost at six to four. Pirates are still losing but they don't seem to be doing it so quietly. We start hitting the ball in that 18-inning game against New York. 
I mean, we swung the bats well the last couple nights here. So that's the key. We have to score some runs, and I feel that uh, as the season goes on, we're going to be a run productive ball club. Here's some other scores for you. Uh, Atlanta beat Cincinnati 17-9. The game was rain delayed. In 12 innings, Neil Allen balked home the winning run. The Dodgers beat the Cardinals 2-1. Hubie Brooks had the home run that beat the Phillies. San Francisco lost to Chicago 4-3 when Sean Dunstan st uh, stole third, came home when the throw from Brenly went into left field. Jose Cruz had three hits, including a home run. Houston beat New York. Also in the American League, Baltimore 3, Chicago 1, Minnesota beat Detroit 7-3. Cleveland 6, Kansas City 2 in the 6th. New York leads Texas 3-1 in the 8th. Toronto and California, nothing in the 1st. Nothing in the 1st on Milwaukee and Oakland. And Boston, Seattle, same thing. Paul McDonald should be wondering a little bit about his job tonight. The Browns are going to get Bernie Kosar in a couple of months in that supplemental draft. Today they traded an undisclosed pick in 86 to Detroit for Gary Danielson. The Lions had gotten Joe Ferguson from Buffalo yesterday. Well, you would have to be at least approaching your mid-30s and have lived around here to have been aware what the 1960 Pirate season was like. No matter how old you are, though, it has to make you feel a little bit older to think that it all happened 25 years ago, but it did. We're going to spend the next three nights bringing it back. You couldn't have found anybody in April of 1960 who would have thought that this group would be posing in October of 1960 for a World Series team picture. But there they were. In the spring of 60, the prospects for this team were not good. At least Jack Hernan of the Post-Gazette didn't seem to think so. Before the exhibition game started, Hernan was saying that the Pirates looked like a sandlot team and not good enough for the greater Pittsburgh League. And the Pirates went a long time before they finally won an exhibition game. And the way they won that first one was a sign of things to come. Even after 11 spring training wins in a row, there were skeptics. Like the scout who said the Pirates had fattened up on bad teams and were only going to get worse. Maybe when people think back to the 1960 World Series and they think of Bill Mazeroski's home run and how exciting that was. But really, that was only one game and one moment in history. What made the 1960 season so exciting, and anybody who lived it knows this, was the season itself and the fact that this team wasn't supposed to go anywhere. And 35 times during the season, this team was behind in the sixth inning or later and came back to win. If you were around in 60, you remember who they won with. Dick Grote, Roberto Clemente, Don Hoke, Bob Skinner, Bill Mazeroski, Dick Stewart, Smokey Burgess, Hal Smith, Bob Friend, Vernon Law, Harvey Haddix, Elroy Face. But you're looking at the man who most people say was the final ingredient in what was a perfect blend put together by Joe Brown and Danny Murtaugh. No, not him, the guy on the right. Now he's the Undersecretary of Agriculture. Now they call him Wilmer, but maybe you remember him as Vinegar Ben. I left St. Louis, though, headed for Pittsburgh uh, with uh, thought in mind, you know, that uh, things like this do not necessarily just happen. Uh, but as a Christian, the Lord kind of plans it for you. And so that was the thought I went to Pittsburgh with. And, of course, people have been very kind in, in, uh, in saying that, you know, I, I did help jail the pitching staff or... Are, are the team, um, but the credit goes to the whole team. It, it really was a tremendous effort. Vinegar Ben Mizell's lifetime dream was to start a World Series game. He never got the chance in 11 years with the Cardinals, three months with the Pirates, and there he was. With 65,000 people on hand that afternoon and 40 million watching on television, I'm the starting pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And those that didn't tune in early, they miss me. <laughs> <laughs> Those Yankees got me out of there in a hurry that afternoon. But Vinegar Ben Mizell was warming up when Mazeroski hit his home run in the seventh game. What, quickly, this, uh, the film that we're using here was produced by a guy by the name of Bill Beal. We'll have more on it later on in the, during the series, but it's going to be available on video cassette, and some of it will go to well, charity. Well, that's, that's, that's a great film. Thank oh, you, John. Rare, yeah. Mayor Dick Caligiuri proclaimed today is Florence Reisenstein Human Relations Day here in Pittsburgh. Tonight, 300 people, or three people, I should say, were honored at a banquet for their exemplary contributions to civil as well as human rights. Awards were presented to Laverna Brown, the Reverend Leroy Patrick, and Miss Bess Topolsky. Tonight's dinner was sponsored by friends of the Pittsburgh Human Relations Commission. The rain continues to fall. I'll have the forecast when we come right back.
A bank doesn't carve out a reputation just on the traveler's check it carries. But the traveler's check it carries can tell you a lot about a bank. At Union National, we carry just one traveler's check, the one rated best by people who carry traveler's checks. We have a solid commitment to offering you the best of everything. So when it comes to traveler's checks, we offer nothing but American Express, the best of everything at Union National Bank. The dragon is back in May is the month. The dragon at the Meadows with over $800,000 in purses, including five big stake races. This Friday night, it's the Bye Bye Bird Pace, and Saturday, it's the Kentucky Derby Doubleheader at 2 and 7.30. And you can watch the Derby at the Meadows. The month of the dragon. Be there! What should I get my mom? Get your Mother's Day gift at Thrift Drug. Like this jewelry box, just $24.99. Or a watch, 20% off. This vanity mirror, just $9.99 at Thrift Drug. And our Treasure Curling Trio, $10.99 after manufacturer's rebate. Look for more gift ideas in our ad. Trust Thrift Drug. After 50 years, we're still the one you can trust. What are you going to get your mommy? The 1985 Toyota Workforce is going to have you whistling while you work. Introducing the dependable cargo van from Toyota, the newest workhorse of the workforce, with more room than any small van. Together with a tough Toyota one-ton and Toyota's lowest price work truck, the standard bed, this workforce will have you whistling while you work. Well, now that Mr. DiNardo has produced a little rain, maybe we can plant our petunias. No? Well, uh, yes, you can plant your petunias. I would wait, Paul. I still believe we're going to get some frost around here, so I'd hold it off just for a little bit. But we are getting the much-needed rain. And uh, since it began raining uh, late this afternoon, we had about uh, two-tenths of an inch of rainfall. And uh, today in Pittsburgh, it was a super day. Uh, fact for traveling, this is school day, but it was a different kind of a school day. We headed northeast bound up to St. Mary's in Elk County. Uh, there we had a surprise visit from the uh, St. Mary's Middle School where we spoke to uh, 700 students there. And uh, Dave Herzing, the principal there, had the kids out to greet us. But here was the main reason for our visit up at St. Mary's. Uh, I was the official starter today for the uh, Special Olympics and the Special Olympics track and field meet up in the uh, St. Mary's area and you can see I started the 50-yard dash there. We had about 270 participants today and uh, the celebrity golf tournament that we hold in June is responsible for the uh, entire year raising funds for all of the uh, activities for these uh, Special Olympians for the entire year and it was just a great day to be with the kids and uh, all the uh, people that uh, help out up in the Special Olympics in uh, Area G and we just had a super day and we thank them so much and uh, next week it's a California middle school in California Pennsylvania and today with the uh, cloud cover we still manage above normal temperatures our low this morning 52 high this afternoon 73 normals this time of year 44 and 66 that's seven and one half degrees above normal currently International Airport the ceiling is a measured 400 feet broken overcast base to 2500 feet visibility three miles light rain and fog temperature 55 degrees, humidity 97%, surface wind northeast at 5, the barometer 30.03 inches rising, satellite photograph, weather's fairly good out west, but over east, all the cloud covers through the tri-state area, west in through Missouri and south. They've had some tornadoes, hail, high winds in through Alabama, western Tennessee, Arkansas, Blytheville, Arkansas, and on down in through Louisiana and Mississippi. That's the heavy activity. Other than that, it's generally rain through our area, and on the radar summaries of radar sites across across the country. Not much, few scattered showers out through the southern Rockies. Most of the activities you can see is now through Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, and south in through Alabama. Latest satellite photograph. This one taken 30 minutes ago shows cloud cover throughout the entire tri-state area and along with it precipitation in through western Pennsylvania and on through most of Ohio. This is all precipitation. The heavier activity, the lighter areas in through southern Ohio and south and on Skywatch 4, National Weather Service radar at Greater Pitt, 120 mile range. It's on up into Venango County and uh, Franklin County in 
through uh, or Franklin, Pennsylvania, and Venango County on into Clarion, and then in through Dubois. They're also getting it and south, all in through the Armstrong County, Indiana County, Westmoreland, uh, even Cambria, Indiana, Blairsville, Blair County, and on down in through Fayette and Green now, and even through West Virginia and Garrett County, and it's still out west, even though it's not showing up on radar, and the reason's on the national map. Here's the front. Steady rain through our area, showers further east with thunderstorms, central West Virginia south. As the low moves on east tonight, forecast through the tri-state area will call for cloudy skies, mild temperatures, rain, steady rain overnight, the low 50 degrees. Flow pattern 18,000 feet. West-northwest up through the lakes, and then this low aloft is moving northeast but weakening, but still is providing west-to-west southwesterly flow. As a result, as the low moves on to the east-northeast, by this time tomorrow night, we'll have the low just south of us. Rain will have ended during the afternoon, and then as the low moves on off the coast, tomorrow night, Friday, we'll start to get under the influence of this high, and the weather will be improving. Forecast for Thursday, still not that great. It will be cloudy, breezy, and rain. The rain will be ending during the mid to late afternoon hours tomorrow. Steady rain until nightfall in West Virginia, south of the area. High tomorrow, 60 degrees. Tomorrow night, as the high pressure starts to sink slowly south and the low moves east, skies will clear. Temperature drops to about 40 degrees on Friday morning. Then on Friday, the high pressure center works its way southeastward into Pittsburgh. And Friday, partly sunny, pleasant, high of 67 degrees. And Saturday, more of the same with temperatures in the upper 60s. That's it. Here's Paul. Okay, Joe, thank you. Jerry Gamble of West Valley City, Utah, decided to build his own plane. This is not unusual. Do-it-yourself kits are available in many forms for people who can't afford the manufactured kinds. And so he spent months in his barn putting it together, and finally, when it was ready to fly, Jerry was so elated about his craftsmanship that he called the plane crash-proof. He took off and crashed 300 yards north of the airport. But he's okay. If he wants another plane, however, he'll have to start all over. Stay tuned now for ABC's Nightline. It's coming up next. Good night. News is a presentation of WTAE TV News. Production of chemical that killed thousands in India to resume in West Virginia. Details tomorrow at 6. I play it safe. With this and my new car. That's why I bought the GM protection plan. It enhances my regular warranty and protects me against most unexpected repair bills for up to four years. If something does go wrong, all I pay is a small deductible. Having extra protection along is a great feeling, even if you never need it. Insist on the genuine GM protection plan when you buy a new GM car or light truck. The biggest names in business are at the Pittsburgh Office Automation and Computer Expo Thursday through Sunday at the Pittsburgh Expo Mart in Monroeville. You've never been in such good company. Hey, next time we'll go to Speedy, eh? Yeah? Speedy? Speedy, my freaking. Next time, go to Speedy. At Speedy Muffler King, we treat you right. We give you a written estimate, and we guarantee your muffler for as long as you own your car. Next time, go to Speedy. Now at Speedy, $10 off mufflers, $10 off a pair of shocks. Because at Speedy, you're a somebody. McHugh, Saturday at 1130.